right, good morning. Starting the January 4th, 2024 PTS meeting. Uh, would you please take attendance? Mary Lou McElwain. Here. Steve Pesci. Here. Mark Syracusa. Here. Erica Wyganek. Here. Deputy <coughs> Chief Mike Maloney. Here. Fire Chief Bill McQuillan. Here. Public Works Director Peter Rice. Here. Stephanie Casella, Planning Department. Here. David Allen. Here. Chairman Andrew Bagley. Here. And uh, just before we get started with the meeting, um, I do want to have a moment of silence. Harold Whitehouse, a very longtime member of this committee, the city council, the school board, um, World War II veteran, uh, just had his 95th birthday here a few months ago, passed away this morning. Uh, so if we could just have a moment of silence for Harold. Thank you, everyone. Um, and moving on with the meeting, the uh, annual selection of chair, I'm going to ask that we postpone that uh, as the mayor has not officially appointed me yet. Our meeting comes before the first real council meeting. Um, so we'll postpone that. I'll do acting chair, and I'll ask Dave to vote for me um, for any of the votes, um, since I'm not technically part of this committee at the moment. Um, so I don't think we have a lot of votes. It's kind of a just one of those logistical things that happens from time to time. If are you we, acting? Are you asking to be back on this committee? Uh, the mayor asked me if I would return. I said yes. So I, okay. my presumption is that I will be back on this committee. <laughs> All right. I don't think there is a long line of people looking to oh, replace come me. Come on! <laughs> it's such a good time. It's the best committee there is. <laughs> and, and I enjoy it. So I, I, I assume I'll be back next month. But if I'm not, then um, you know I, you I've enjoyed personally. my time here. <laughs> uh, could we have the financial report? Look for a motion to accept the financial report. Motion accept. Second. And is there any questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, next <coughs> is public comment. And uh, just come up to the podium, uh, state your name and address, and uh, try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. Who's the person? Mike a little closer. Oh, yeah, so. sure. Good morning, Elizabeth Bradder, property owner, 159 McDonough Street. Those of you who've been on this committee a long time know that parking is my thing. Um, before the holidays, I did a little research on parking because I know this committee and the council and all kinds of people are involved in changing how we do parking in Portsmouth and other cities. And um, these are some of the things I found that I thought would be of interest to you. So one of them is a, the thick report that I gave this very nice young lady whose name I forgot, I'm sorry. Um, and then I just made the, the, I just made a copy for you that's the first three pages. But it is a very interesting report on the increase in number of cars throughout the world, including the United States. So the number of cars being bought and driven has not gone down as was predicted 20 years ago. It has actually gone up. So I think that's an important thing to look at. It also has, in the, in the whole report, it also has some suggestions on how in the future they perceive, this goes through 2030, how they perceive parking will work with the admission of phones, et cetera. So I thought it was a very good report, and it has some interesting ways to deal with parking. The second one is um, what Boston is doing with their buildings that are over 50,000 square feet. Um, it's a quick article. I thought you would find it interesting. Um, they're doing it. It might be something to watch. 
maybe not in, implement yet, but to watch. And the third one is Shoop, our favorite parking analyst, the guru of all, who um, has for years lived in a utopia of if we did this, everything would work great. But as I go to park in Portsmouth and I see people staying in spots too long or parking in handicapped and they're just going to be a minute and all of that, there's always that human factor. So he does have some great ideas um, to read about. It's his newest information, at least that's how I understood it, um, but it's always worth taking a look at. So that's my public hearing for today is just to provide you with information because I know you're looking at a lot of changes here in Portsmouth and I thought these might be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, just one quick comment. Sure. Mr. Chairman, um, and just to, you, I just want to address that last statement you made. I'm not aware of us making a lot of changes. So it, it's we are reviewing the utilization of parking, and we are review, looking at the parking principles, um, but we're, it's not like we're looking at some radical wholesale change in, in the system. The system's been working very well. Um, so I just wanted, you know, it, 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 that statement I just wanted to address because it's, I don't feel it's an accurate reflection of the process going on. Uh, right. Good morning. Um, Matthew Glenn, 34 Harrison Ave, and representing uh, Seco Stereo Bicycle Riders. And um, I've also got maybe about 10 copies to uh, pass around there. Um, I need to first say something about the major changes planned for Russell and Deer Streets. Um, and I'm curious how many of you, upon seeing that in the packet, went to the bicycle and pedestrian plan to see what was recommended there? Uh, how many of you know what was recommended in the bike ped plan for those streets, which are now getting a full redesign? Um, so I went to the plan to uh, look it up, and um, yeah, it's calling for bike lanes on both sides of those very wide streets, at least the portion of Deer Street that is wide, and then as it turns towards Russell. And the reason is to connect bike lanes on Market Street to Maplewood Ave. So. Um, it is a connector, maybe not uh, the spine of a network necessarily, um, but I just think it's interesting that that was in the plan. Um, in fact, in 2018, when there was an update to the plan and a presentation from the planning department, those streets were highlighted as in progress, in design, that the design was already happening, uh, and it seemed to say for bike lanes. Um, and now, all of a sudden, uh, there's something in the packet that seems to be a done deal. Um, uh, in the packet that showed up two days ago. So um, I, uh, I don't know that you know, you're know you open to changes at this point. It looks like there's a big development happening there. Um, but I would like to make a request to the um, chairman, as you start a new term, um, to ask that every packet include reference to the bike ped plan when you propose major changes to streets. So every time um, you look at a street, um, you could include just a reference what was in the bike ped plan and then have to justify why you're not doing uh, what was recommended because um, that big picture is important. So uh, that's what I had there. Um, I do want to move on to uh, Middle and Miller, that intersection. Um, so uh, Sabre has been following the proposals closely uh, for this intersection uh, because of its importance to that larger network of routes in the city and uh, for me personally because I commute by bike uh, through here daily. Um, I do want to commend the planners for at least considering all users, um, seeing it as a complete streets project, where maybe Russell and Deer does not seem to be a complete streets project. Um, and uh, I would like to see more projects that start from a point like this, giving options that all accommodate both bicycles, <coughs> pedestrians, car users, uh, transit, um, and, uh, and, and everybody's needs. Um, so Sabre's preferred choice is Alternative 3, uh, the one that was first proposed in November, uh, not the one that you see in your packet today. Uh, we do recognize the benefits of Alternative 1 for pedestrians by bumping out sidewalks and narrowing the crossing distance, um, and it may do the most to slow drivers simply because they must wait for turning traffic. I'm not sure it will slow speed for drivers coming out of the bars at uh, 10 o'clock or midnight uh, when there are uh, uh, fewer cars turning. 
Um, however, it is most problematic of the options given for bicyclists, as option one puts them in the driver's side door zone of many, many parked cars on both sides of the intersection. Uh, when outbound and stopped at the light, a bicyclist has to then merge into the traffic lane very abruptly before the cars at that light have a chance to get ahead. Uh, so this is really asking for trouble. Uh, while the bike boxes for turning are appreciated, uh, we cannot support option one. Um, and I also see no consideration for bus stops in alternative one. So I'm wondering if they're intended to stop in the travel lane, um, which really holds up traffic or if, uh, you know, in alternative one, there's really no place for them to pull off. Uh, turning to alternative three, it was a decent plan before these new changes to add back parking spots. Uh, bicyclists don't accelerate or move as fast as drivers, so the longer bike lane or bus stop there in front of Runlet May House is essential to allow time for the cars to get ahead before a rider needs to merge out into the middle of that shared lane, uh, because that's all we have right now is a shared lane there. Uh, for inbound traffic, it's the same, allowing parking in those um, really three spots in front of Margeson Apartments just forces riders to move left and compete for space with traffic or to ride in the door zone. Um, you're narrowing the road on that plan with a hashed out center island, so you're making conflict that much more likely between cars and bikes at that location. Uh, maybe you could consider moving the bus stop here as another reason to uh, keep, keep that little um, sidewalk island open. Uh, so in summary, I, I urge you to go back to that original alternative three to reduce the risk of dooring and of unsafe abrupt merges and to leave that door open for a more connected and continuous uh, bike route in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Is there anyone on Zoom? All right, I'll close the public comment and then we'll move on to presentations. We don't have any. And then new business is to Russell Street. Request for approval of on-street parking changes and loading zone on Deer Street and Russell Street by property owner. And the sample motion is moved to approve requested changes to on-street parking on Deer Street and Russell Street as presented on the approved site plans for the project. We will, uh on the screen there. Let me put it up on chair too. Okay, so uh, it's hard to see on the screen, but it's also in your packets. So this is a project that has gone through technical advisory committee review uh, internally in the city. And it's also gone through planning board review and approval, and these, this is the, the approved plan at this point. One of the conditions of the approval from the planning board was that the applicant needed to come to the Parking Traffic Safety Committee for approval of the changes to the on-street parking. Um, there was a, some, a reconfiguration of spaces, um, a loss of some spaces, and uh, you know some designation of some spaces. So these are things that the TTS committee needs to weigh in on. Um, Overall, the plan presents a lot of benefits. This is the, the anybody who's not familiar, this is the parking lot across from the Sheridan Hotel, the corner of Deer and Russell. And it's proposed to have uh, three separate buildings, but all interconnected on the site. Uh, as part of the project, the, the benefits we see from the city's standpoint is that uh, there will be a widening of the sidewalks out here, increasing the pedestrian space, uh, reconfiguration of the Deer and Russell intersection make it much more pedestrian friendly with crosswalks, shorter crossing distances, slowing the speed down of cars coming up Russell, making that right turn onto uh, Deer Street, uh, wider sidewalks along Deer and Russell. And with that widening of the sidewalk there, there is a uh, loss of a few spaces in this area here. And there's a new crosswalk with a flashing beacon at this location at Fort Walk Place. And the uh, Currently approved plan removed the two parking spaces here on uh, Deer Street. Part of the thought was that it would give in increase the visibility of this new crosswalk. Uh, but with the with, with the flashing beacons here, it, that's not as much of a concern. There is still room to get by. So uh, the next slide we're showing what we have uh, a proposed change. So there is a, a loss of some parking in this area this is because of the reconfiguration, the intersection shifting it from this location to this location. Yeah. Uh, 
some of the spaces that were in the middle of the intersection here have been removed because they shouldn't have been there in the first place. They shouldn't have parking in the middle of an intersection. And then uh, I think two, two spaces on this side of the intersection were removed because of the realignment. The number of spaces up along uh, Russell, uh -oh. <laughs> okay. So along Russell here, the, there is no change in the number of spaces. There just is a reconfiguration. Uh, there's an existing limousine parking spot here and a bus stop. And as part of the project, they're proposing to, I oh don't know. <laughs> uh, there's a proposed loading zone in this area, which would be before parking hours of 9 a.m., 6 to 9 a.m., the loading zone. And uh, that's the main part of it. So there's a loss of nine spaces that's currently proposed, and those nine spaces would be along uh, Deer Street here, primarily this area here, and a couple spaces here at the intersection. Also, as part of the packet, they have presented their, uh, I think this is the trash pickup, and yes, delivery, moving, and, and uh, trash pickup. So as shown here, they're proposing to have these two spa parking spaces as being loading zone in the morning hours, as well as these two spaces over here, 6, uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And their trash pickup would be in this back shared street here along the side the, the railroad tracks. This will be a shared space with vehicles, pedestrians, bicycles. <coughs> and it's a one-way street from Maplewood up to Green Street. And this would be the trash loading area back here in the dump. It's a, a trash loader, trash truck here, a rear loading trash truck come in and pick up from this area. Uh, entrance into the site will be a driveway here off of Russell Street into the upper level of parking inside. And then there'll be a driveway here off the back street, which will go in, into the lower level of the, par of the development. Uh, the parking is primarily for the residents of the uh, and tenants of the new buildings. There will be a few guest spots, but in general, it's not open to the public. So public parking will remain on, on the street or in, or in the foundry garage or other private lots. And uh, see, so this slide here shows what we have, the city staff has proposed as some minor tweaks to this plan. are proposing is that uh, this loading zone here be moved down to what is being shown as a limo parking and bus stop and this our thoughts on this is that this would give the loading zone some more room uh, when a load, loading truck has a ramp out the back it has room here to put that ramp out without having to worry about a parked car behind it as it would be here uh, again it would still be 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. so that it be, could be used as regular parking in, in the rest of the day and we would propose to eliminate the existing limousine parking. Uh, we, our experience has not shown that it's been used much. And at times, if there is a need to have a spot for limousine, it can be reserved through the parking department. Uh, so we can still accommodate limousines, but this would give us a chance to capture, recapture a couple of parking spaces out here for the rest of the remainder of the time. And over in this area here, it, because of the widening of the sidewalk and the new crosswalk, it was originally proposed to get rid of these two existing parking spaces. But in looking at the width here, we still have 20 feet width, so it allows eight foot for a parking lane and 12 feet for the travel lane. So it's not making the roadway any narrower in this area. As if the committee is comfortable with keeping those two parking spaces there, I, I think it could be accommodated because we'll have the crosswalk here, but there will be flashing beacons that pedestrians can push to grab attention of drivers. The reason is it is a short distance between these two intersections and expected queuing comes back through here. You know, a pedestrian crossing from this side going across would be coming out possibly behind a car stopped in traffic. That's why we wanted the flashing lights here uh, for more visibility. A lot of pedestrians cross at this location today because of the, the big parking lot that's here. It's, it's a big uh, pedestrian crossing, but there is no crosswalk and there hasn't been any accidents here. <coughs> Without a crosswalk, uh, pedestrians tend to use more care when crossing. They'll look both ways, and they know they have a good distance across, so they're careful about it. Our concern was that with a crosswalk here, they might just blindly walk out in traffic and not being as careful. So that's why we have the flashing beacons added there. So that is the uh, 
plan. I, we have the applicant here. They can answer any questions that come up. I could answer any questions as to how city staff approved this plan during the TAC approval process. Mr. Chairman, I, I move to accept the plan as modified by staff recommendations for discussion. A second for discussion. Anybody want to go first? Eric, can you can you um, address the point that was brought up by um, by Matt relative to the the bicycle considerations? I I see sharrows throughout this area. Um, I feel like you know there's a there's a thought process, but if you could speak to that. Yeah, I believe the the, the there was a call for bike lanes in the area, uh, but looking at the intent of this area was to make it you know, pedestrian friendly, all accommodating, multi-use, you know, pedestrians, bikes, and vehicles, and trucks. Um, providing bike lanes out here would require a wider street. We're trying to keep the street down, and the speed, actual speed limit posted out there is 15 miles an hour on Russell Street today. You know, vehicles go much faster than that because it's a nice wide road with parking. So this plan would narrow the street Hopefully that would reduce the speed somewhat, make it a more pedestrian and uh, bicycle friendly so that bikes could actually share the street with vehicles. Uh, so we're seeing in, in areas like this where we're not, we don't have the room for bike lanes because we've got competing needs on the streets and, and we do want to make a, an improvement for pedestrian accommodations. So that's why the plan has the sharrows in it at this point instead of yeah. bike lanes. So, so one thing that there's often a misconception that the master plan is kind of a final design. Uh, the bicycle pedestrian master plan is a final design. Uh, it is really just a recommendation to consider. Um, when, when it comes to the actual implementation, we have to take into consideration a number of competing factors, um, you know, such as right-of-way widths, uh, what other <coughs> desires are, um, and, and competing uses. So, you know, I, I, I understand um, the advocacy from uh, Sabre, and I, I, I don't disagree with it. Um, I do have to balance a number of other things. Uh, so when we do these reviews, um, you know, we do take into consideration um, these things, but it's often a balance, and it's ne it's never the perfect solution, but it's a it's a it's the best solution we can accommodate. So for that reason, I, I'll vote in favor of this um, approach. Dave, yeah, I just had a question. In in the process, has this received planning board approval? This plan received planning board approval? Yes, it has. Okay. I had a similar process question. Really, it's just a troublemaker question, so we can ignore it. But planning board already approved it, but sent it to us for approval. If we disagree, like if we didn't approve it, what would happen? Like, would they have to go back and get a new plan? I well, for example, we did make, we are requesting modifications to the approved plan. So it's not it's not a, a foregone conclusion. You know, the planning board doesn't have the authority to, when it comes specifically to parking spaces, um, you know, they don't have the authority to overrule this committee. And it's actually ultimately the council yeah. as we make recommendations. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a specific carve out of that. Okay. It's similar to like the Tree and Greenery Committee. Yeah. It's just funny. You know, the Tree and Greenery Committee. And we have seen that there at the Trees and Green Committee with sidewalks yeah. several times where the plans of the sidewalks had to be changed -cha change because the Trees and Greens Committee didn't approve of Right, in this outs. case, that was one of the things that did happen. The Tree and Greenery modified it. So. so we do have the ability to say no, but we should have a very good yeah, reason just, otherwise. It's but it also went through tech, which is, you know, representation of you know, folks that are here as well. Mary Lou? Yes, um, I think bike paths are important on Russell um, because we have a bike path that comes up to Russell Street on Market and it doesn't go anywhere. There aren't any bike corrals there and there's no place for people to go because Market Street is not safe for cyclists to go into Market Square. Um, so I think we need to accommodate bike paths. And I'm wondering if this design was instigated by the developer or by the city? I think it was a dynamic between the two. Yeah. Obviously, the, the developer doesn't want to do any infrastructure, if possible, because it costs money. Uh, the cities, we have to balance the needs, and we, you know, we make sure we protect the city's interests. But also, you also need to understand that there is a bicycle path that will be connecting from Market Street to Maplewood Avenue, from Maplewood Avenue to Bartlett Street, uh, and then continuation out to the bike uh, bike trail. So there is plan. There are plans for a bicycle path. Oftentimes, you can't accommodate bicycle paths on these old city streets. I get that. 
I get that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm looking at the entire plan, and I think that we need to be paying attention to bicycle paths. So <coughs> that's my comment on this design. There is one. Um, I guess, and then uh, yeah, um, Eric, could you go to the one below that you were just at? I feel like it was helpful. This one here? Yeah. So uh, I guess, number one, I like the city's recommend recommended modifications. I think they make sense. I, I think it's a good use of space. Um, I, I like the idea that the loading zone is before parking officially starts, but, you know, I think there may be some people who want to park overnight. So I, I think I like what you're what you how you've recommended changes. I agree with those um, relating to bicycle use in this area and the pedestrian spaces. So the, it seems like the building is surrounded by pretty wide paths, which would traditionally, I think, be wide enough to be considered a mixed use path. Um, there's this full street in the back and then really generous sidewalk in the front. Are those going to be made of, I, I'm torn here because I, I like the idea of a contrasting texture so it's not just a wide paved city street that encourages high speeds, but are they bike friendly? Like do we expect bicyclists to ride on them? Are bicyclists allowed to ride on them? And certainly the street behind seems like it's potentially a a good the bicycle. The street behind was intended to be a, yeah. a shared space. Yeah, okay. th th that'll be a shared two-way bike uh, lane back there. Vehicles will only be going one way from Maplewood to Green, but bicycles and pedestrians can use it in both directions. I it, don't know the surface of it. Neil, would you do you know the surface of the that I road it was back a paver there? Paver material. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Neil Hanson. I'm. Uh, Engineer with Tyne Bond, we're the engineer of record on the project. Um, yeah, Eric, so that, that rear drive is going to be a uh, unit paver uh, with some decorative banding. And the banding is designed to sort of delineate a separation between vehicular and pedestrian space. Um, but pedestrians and bikes and are able to use the entire thing. Um, and I just do want to mention that the sidewalk width is actually a zoning requirement. We have a minimum width that's based on the height of the building. And that really is what set our curb line and gave us the, the remainder of the road to fit in parking and, and travel lanes and, and everything else. Uh, and I just do want to mention one other thing because it, it's not highlighted on here is we are requesting a second loading zone um, across from Portwalk. Yeah, those two spaces yep. there as well. Yep. So I just wanted to make sure that that didn't get no, lost. That's still called out. Well. We just didn't mention it because we weren't proposing any change to that. Right. It's it, just because it's not highlighted. I just wanted to make yep. sure it wasn't lost. So. That's all, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Steve, did you have? Uh, I support most of the changes suggested there, but just, Neil, while you're sitting there, I, I think it's important that it's a common understanding that's a public right away that bicyclists and pedestrians can use that street that you're just yeah, talking about. In the rear of the building? It's not a private, yes. okay, it, it will, it will it be gated or? No, so it is. it will be a uh, dedicated community space, so the city okay. will be granted an easement to that. Um, as well as the area between um, the building on the corner of Maplewood and, and Deer Street and then building two in the middle, that space in between okay. is also going to be public access space. Great, thank you. A couple questions for Eric and, and the group. So the access, I think I'm seeing an access egress point on Deer Street between building one and two. Is there a curb cut in access right Here? there? Yeah. No, it's a pedestrian walk. Pedestrian, here, okay. But there's no vehicular access. Okay. Um, and on that um, crosswalk with the flashing beacon, which is great, is there any opportunity to have some kind of delineated pedestrian refuge point in the center line? Yeah, like an island, a raised island or something? Uh, uh, or? Something. I mean, uh, it's difficult because of the left turns into Port Walk Place. Yeah. Do have anything in the. In there. I mean, right now we all agree that that Carter is kind of high speed because there's nothing around it and people fly regardless of speed limits. So I'm a little concerned about that just being an unprotected crosswalk of any kind. And I think, you know, teeing up this intersection is going to make a, a difference on that. Okay. Right now the vehicles come up Russell Street and it's, it's basically a, a slip lane okay. right there. So my one thought on the bike lane, and I'm speaking towards the water, I call it eastbound, maybe it's northbound, um, on Deer Street. You know, to me, that travel lane looks very wide, uh, especially uh, between the pedestrian flasher crosswalk and the Russell Street intersection. There's a lot of lane width there. 
I don't know what the, your measurement is. 14 feet. So uh, I'm concerned about speeds. Building it as you lane, right? yeah to lane. towards the water. Yep, yeah. eastbound, yeah. northbound. I mean that looks really wide, and I think we're going to struggle with speeds there. So it seems to me there is an opportunity, pavement width wise, to do something, whether it's just for speed control or to, to you know, consider the bike lane. But I see some pretty wide lanes. That lane going towards the water between Maplewood and Russell looks pretty darn wide to me. So um, that that's one concern that maybe you can address. Uh, and, and if so, of course, I think uh, when we just get back into speed limits, we'll obviously have to revisit the speed limit on this street and whether 15 is appropriate and or legal. So, but I, I guess the thing is the pavement width. Of all the points I just raised, mm -hmm. the lane width, yeah. the travel lane width. And that's, you know, that's the existing curb on this side of the road, which is not yeah. changed. So it is very wide today. I think it is it is narrowing up some because I think the, the center line is being shifted in this area, perhaps. But uh, you know, the sidewalks are coming out, so it is narrowing up on this side. But I think this side is existing, remaining what it is today. And the width is chokered down before the Russell intersection. Yeah, you, you narrow yep. down at this point. That, that's good to see. Yeah, just a little concerned with that. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, having parked cars here could help with that slowing traffic, you know, making it narrower as you come around the corner from Maplewood or, or straight across from Deer. So I have a question on the cyclists. So if someone's coming up from Market Street, how do they access the paths that you're referring to around this development? Coming from downtown or from 95? From 95. If they're coming up Market Street from out of town and they come to Russell, where do they go? Yeah, there's, there's a bike path along Market Street now, which then right, turns. Right, but it doesn't extend. No, and then you, you're on to Russell Street. You're in, in on the street with Cheryl. traffic. Yeah, the Cheryl. Right, but if we're Cheryl. talking about other places that are have public access, how would they get to those spaces? <coughs> how would a cyclist get to any of the paths? Yeah. Is there so the, public access from Russell Street? Yeah, the, so the so the the back of the building, you would have Green Street. You turn onto Green Street. Yeah, you'd be right there on the left. In the future, the, the, there's a development that's being done at the old Duda Spa, Green Pages oh, yeah. building, right. which includes a section of, of bike trail that will then link into Market Street. So there'll be a there'll be a bike trail there that you'll access, and there'll be signage, and there'll be um, it'll be clear wayfinding. Um, so that'll be you know an option for uh, taking you in, and that'll connect to a, a trail that's underway uh, in design for um, the work that was done at the <coughs> hotel. Excuse me. And the agreement with the next property around the next development would get you all the way over to Maplewood, which then connect you to the trail along North Mill Pond. So there's there is a vision on how the whole thing's right. going to work, uh, and wayfinding is part of that process. Right. So this is a few years. Yep. Five years. Yep. Eight years. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe two years, depending upon lawsuits, depending upon the economy. You know. I mean, some of these projects would have been done already. It had they've been not lawsuits. So. Okay. Yeah, if I can make a comment too about bike lanes in the area, bike lanes versus Sierra's. When the 2014 plan was done, there's been a lot of updates and state of the art practices on bike and ped design in that period since then, and that's why we're we're looking to update our bike ped plan actually for a lot of that reason. And the current thinking is that a bike lane in this area would not be the best uh, bicycle accommodation as was mentioned previously, for other locations, you have a door zone. When you don't, to put a bike lane in this area, because of the volume of vehicles on the street and the parked cars, you really need to have a buffer zone along that bike lane. You can't just put a bike lane right next to a door zone yeah. and right next to traffic. You know, it gives a false sense of security. At least with a share where you know you're in traffic, and if, if you're not comfortable, then it's not the place for you, but you can turn off onto Green Street here and, and then come down this bike back alleyway, shared use path. Oh. Yeah, that's why I asked the question of mm -hmm. how you access around the yeah, building. Just a quick Mark and then Dave. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say yes to this. I just like the idea that uh, you know the city wants to move forward with this plan, but it's also a recommendation of the city council, and it's also a long way away. So I agree with Matt and the advocacy group that we should continue having conversations on some kind of you know consideration for bike lane or more bike safety measures. So I'm going to say yes to this for now. 
and let it move on and go to city council and uh, Councilor Bagley, he knows the pulse of his, you know, his colleagues on the, on, so, you know, he'll let us know how they feel or we'll all know at some point and it might come back here. So I'm going to say yes. All right. Dave? I just have two points. One is um, if we could include the requirement that they put a bike route signage on the entrance to that street or, or wherever it's deemed most appropriate, that'll get a cyclist to that point. And then the other point that um, to what Eric was talking about, I know yesterday you had the, didn't you have a, a pre-proposal meeting for uh, update to the bike ped master plan? So that is actually, you know, in process. So I think yep. that's important to know. It was a good, it was a good dialogue with the, <clears throat> the potential uh, team. Uh, there was two firms that showed up. Um, it was, it was a good discussion. Good. And I'll just, oh, Erica. Um, <coughs> And I don't know that we have to change this now, but I just mentioned that area that um, Steve pointed out that was wide. It, would it, I th it's hard to tell the dimensions, but would angle parking fit there? Could we get, yeah. you know, a gentle angle? I, I think it would be hard to get a bike lean in there because it's wider in that space, but it kind of shrinks back down, kind of which is, yeah. so I, I feel like that might be tricky, but could we those five parallel spaces maybe could turn into seven angle spaces well we need um was it 12, 12 and 18 need 30 feet to get angle parking in. i don't know if we have 30 feet from the center line to the curb mm. I, yeah angle parking makes me anxious in this tight a space mm. you know, it's eight and yeah, be, yeah i couldn't tell but it looks close up. to 30. yes you know, I, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with the, you know, the potential of, you know, skinning up that section of roadway, um, but I'm not sure if this developer is the vehicle to do that. Or how about a bike corral or bike parking and bump the parking out a little bit? Hmm. Well, you could put a bike corral in this area here where there's no parking allowed. This is a fire, oh, that's a fire hydrant, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just another obstruction. Isn't a, a fire hydrant a bike lock mechanism? <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to get the view around that, though. <laughs> Is there bike parking on this site? We're talking about vehicle parking. We haven't heard anything about bike parking. Sure. I don't think so. That's a stipulation for... Yeah, there's, there's bike accommodations. I don't know if you can speak to it, Neil. Or... Yeah, there's, there's bike racks, uh, exterior bike racks, throughout the site and then there's um, interior bike rooms for the residents. Will be. But yeah, there is a, a minimum bike space requirement in the zoning that we had to adhere to. <laughs> Steve? One other fine point I forgot. Continuing towards the water on Russell Street, and I realize this might be outside of what you've designated as a developer's impact, <laughs> but I, I hope we could continue the Shero markings all the way to Market Street. You know, it's kind of off plan, off drawing. But if we're going to put them in from Maplewood to Russell, um, it would be nice to have that continue both directions down to Market Street. Do we want that to continue down to Market? Isn't part of the idea to get people onto Russell? Well, I, I agree with that. I'm just thinking probably the lane width's there for logic. You know, I don't know how many shares it would be and whether it's appropriate, but I guess this would be on us to consider this, but just asking the staff to think about the continuity and connectivity. I think it makes a lot of sense to have continuity, to have connect, you know, connectivity on the, on the trail. So if it's, the, it's a matter of adding a few uh, additional cheros, which I can't imagine it being more than a half dozen. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the developer would be happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but does that connect to anything? I think the statement could be just that it needs to be continue, contiguous or continuous between. Because our bike path ends at Market Street. We have a bike path. It goes the whole way at Market? I thought it ended at Russell. Yeah, it ends at Russell. It ends at Russell. It ends at Russell. So if you have Russell coming down to it, it just connects. So you share those down to the Market Street bike path. I mean, I understand. No, all the way to, to market, but I'm understanding that they may not exist. Lane or marks might not exist on market, but clearly it's a destination that people want to get to. I, I believe so. that they are designated on okay. market. Okay. Because it goes from a, a bike lane to a, a shared path. Okay. Great. 
So I'll just make a comment about these plans. Um, most of it's already been rehashed, but you know we do have a kind of a unique situation with this back alley where we can put bikes and pedestrians there as well. And we know this parking lot area and the slipstream effect has been a bit of a nightmare because people just cross wherever there's parked cars on both sides. It's even though there haven't been accidents, it's not really an ideal mm -hmm. heavy pedestrian zone. So this particular plan has the bump outs, which are great for pedestrians. And it was noted that may not be so great on summer and middle street um, for bikes. But I think because we have the ability to put the bikes on the shared use path, the bump outs for pedestrians here, which kind of preclude bike lanes in this area is, is that balance of if, you know, sometimes you, you emphasize pedestrian activity over bike versus vehicle. So there, there's never, because our the buildings are where the buildings are and the property lines are where they are, we can't really design things, you know, from a clean sheet of paper. But this is, I think, a good uh, way where we're balancing all the conflicting needs of all the different users of the roads, and we're giving everybody a good alternative, even though, no, well, in this case, maybe pedestrians have the ideal alternative, and vehicles and, and bikes have a they take a slightly less, and parking take a slightly less uh, emphasis in this plan. But I think this is a very pedestrian heavy zone, so it makes sense for us to kind of put pedestrians at the peak mm -hmm. um, optimizing of use. So we had a motion seconded with some suggestions for, for the staff to consider with so the developer. What I heard was two suggestions from the committee uh, and that the staff had made recommendations that were shown. So the initial move, uh, motion included those staff recommendations. And the other two recommendations that I heard were uh, bike signage uh, to you know, add additional bike signage. And then the other one was to, the continuation of the Sharos to you know, make it a connection. Make that a friendly amendment, Steve? Yes. And I, I, I'll second it. Just leaving the, the issue of the width of that segment of uh, deer to be considered uh, you know whether it's like well it is what it is we'll have to think about it with speed limit setting etc but that would be the third piece that yeah I mean it's if it, if it was earlier on in the process I mm -hmm. could see you know but it's a material impact to the developer to reset that amount of curbing and reset that amount of sidewalk um, and I you know given the fact that they've already committed and approved at the planning board level um, I'm hesitant to add um, a stipulation such as that. Um, I think it's it's something that you know, I think the other measures will help improve the area significantly. Um, and if some point in the future, um, you know, when we're redoing work, we can address it. And that would really be on the the other side of the street anyway, wouldn't it? Where we'd want to move yeah. the sidewalks out, not the side right. under construction. Yeah. <clears throat> You, you don't remember, recall why that car got there. It must have been done when Port Park built. You, you, you can see the curb line yeah. is consistent from here along the bump out and then up to here, but then that car was in here. So I don't know. If yeah, I, I see, see recall it had something to do with truck traffic. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. And, you know, the vision of the, at the time, it was a different view of what was going to happen. Yeah. So we're back to. Uh, Staff suggestions, and then I the friendly amendment by Steve, and I second it. So is that vote time, or I think so. But Erica has her hand up, so I just look. I do think there's actually 30 feet there. Mm -hmm. Just throwing that out there. We don't have to add angle we could, parking, and it doesn't have to happen <clears> now. <throat> but it is very wide. So yeah. that I mean that modification could be part of our purview, separate from separate, this discussion. Right, exactly. Okay, let's come back to that after. <coughs> Good plan. So a few other places I'd like to see diagonal parking. That's Peter knows. I love it. <laughs> I just think it's easier. Peter, Sorry. back in diagonal parking. Back in, yeah, back in only. Mary Lou? Yeah, I was just going to say that the recommendation for wayfaring signage is really important, and as soon as things get going, those signs should be put up. Yeah, and I, I think that's a big reason why it comes to this committee, so that we can highlight these things and... We did make some adjustments to the loading zone and the parking. Um, the wayfaring signs is an like, excellent suggestion because that'll help people that are not familiar with the area going, know that yeah. there's a better route that brings them essentially to the same place. Yeah. There is signage proposed at the intersection with Green Street, but you know maybe you could add something out at uh, Russell to. Yeah. Um, yes. I ask a question? Just 
point of, just to clarify, if we do add this bike signage condition, who is who's determining where that signage goes? Is that That's Eric? Not. Or yeah, DPW. I would say it would be approved okay. by okay. traffic engineer. Okay, can we just add that to sure. the Sure. As approved. Good question. All right, with that, I guess we can have a vote. Okay. All those in favor? For the motion. Of the motion and the friendly amendment. Yep. The friendly amendment. <laughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, moving on. To you. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Um, old business. Middle Street, Miller Avenue, Summer Street intersection. Request for selection of preferred alternative for construction by BTW. Uh, sample motion is moved to select the hybrid option for reconstruction of the intersection. We'll just need a motion and a Move second. For discussion purposes? A second. Second. Okay, so. At, at the, our last meeting, we presented, we had our consultants from Sebago <coughs> here and presented the, the, the two plans that were originally presented to this committee two years ago, and then the third hybrid option, which was requested. And there was some feedback and input on that third option, and we've made some uh, proposed changes to that third option here in, this, in the packet. Uh, what's on the screen here now is that's the first alternative. Let me share this again with our online. So going back to the first option, uh, this is bringing the curbs out, um, you know, restricting uh, parking and travel weight width in the area, which helps to reduce the crosswalk distance. But in this situation, there's no ability to make, to put a right a left turn on Middle Street onto Miller Ave. And what would happen with that, even though it was a new signal with an advanced phase, you would have this very similar situation to what you have at the other end of Miller Ave at South Street. If anybody's familiar with coming out down South Street from City Hall and trying to make a left on the Sagamore, you know, you get a few seconds for that first left turn, then if you don't make it, you're stuck waiting behind someone making a left turn for the rest of the cycle and waiting for that signal to cycle around. In this situation, it would be even worse because you have more traffic opposing coming into town on Middle Street. So that queue here on Middle Street would build up very fast and very long. So that's why this plan is not recommended from a traffic standpoint, traffic operation standpoint. It makes it worse than it is today. So we have the third option, and this presents the, uh, I, and the second option, just to clarify, that was voted out, I believe, at the last meeting. We, nobody liked that second option. So the third option was preferred, but with some, some changes. And what we've done here is try to include a bit more parking, because we heard from residents in the area that they really didn't want to lose any parking. Um, so what we did here on this plan was to shorten up the bike lane transition to get, re, keep the existing four parking spaces that are along this island. Uh, this can be done by squeezing these lanes up a little bit more. I didn't show on this plan, but we can squeeze these lanes. They're 11 feet. We can get a couple feet here uh, to get the, the width back in the road, which is there. Um, th there would be, you know, this always concerns the dooring, and you know, this would be a shallow area. So the, the bicycles should be out in traffic, not right next to the doors. In this area here, there's an existing bus stop and parking along here. We're, we aren't proposing any changes. This is just striping to reinforce that parking is allowed here. And, uh, and this would uh, get us another four spaces back that we had uh, removed just because of the striping that was done here. It doesn't affect the, um, the design of the program, just the, the number of parking spaces that could be utilized here. And it's important to note, we did uh, bicycle, I mean, not bicycle, vehicle parking observations out here. We did it when we were doing the bike lane project um, six years ago, and then we updated it with some counts uh, in the past few weeks. And what we've seen is that this side of the street gets very little usage of parking. You, you, don't, you have, do have some cars down by Cabot Street, but in general, this area does not get parked very much. So even though we're showing parking spaces here, you know, the chances of being able to park here are very slim. And with the few spaces that are lost here at the intersection, there is the ability to make them up over here. What am I doing? Um, so, and this side of the street does get more vehicles parked, but there's still, you're never seeing it fully parked all the way up to the intersection. So even though we are technically losing a few spaces, we're not losing spaces that are being used. <coughs> um, so with this plan, you, you do get the left turn lane coming out of the town 
which will help with the through movements here. You get the bike lanes designated. They are short, but it does show the drivers that bike lanes are present here at the intersection. In the future, if we ever are able to get the bike lane into town, we can continue that on, but there is, is impacts to parking when we put in bike lanes. So this, this uh, modified alternative does uh, provide eight more parking spaces than was shown in the original uh, hybrid alternative and improves all the signal equipment, brings everything up to 88 standards for pedestrians, and it helps with the traffic flow. So that's, that's our proposed changes since the last meeting. Thank you. Now, is this scheduled, Peter? Yes. When? This, this summer. Oh, okay. Erica? I got lots of questions. <laughs> Um, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I went back and I watched the video from the last, the first time we talked about this. Um, and I have questions about the volumes that we're using. I think the count was done during COVID and then there were adjustments made to account for non-COVID and then 1% growth for 10 year future condition was used. Mm -hmm. I am curious if anyone has done a more recent count We've seen so many changes from COVID. Most intersections, their peak hour is not the peak that they had pre-COVID. You know, there tends to be a 10 to 15% reduction during the peak hour. And I think some of the dynamics may have changed. We may have more left turners now, we may have fewer, but I would be, I, I don't wanna see this intersection overbuilt. I feel pretty strongly about that. We, we put a lot of effort into trying to make Middle Street, a slower speed road that's more friendly to other modes. This location has a lot of pedestrian activity, including a number of disabled um, accessible, accessibility limited individuals. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important that we're, and it's a gateway to our downtown, you know, it really is. So I, I don't want to see it overbuilt. And I feel like assuming a 10 percent growth i i'm not worried about an intersection not operating like i wouldn't want an intersection to operate at level of service b or c with 10 percent growth in my downtown that to me is a distinctly overbuilt intersection um i know that's a, a you know one percent growth is a is a typical assumption so i'm not criticizing anyone doing that i just think that i'm not worried about the operations that are projected here because it's a, a pretty conservative analysis. Um, so I, I guess I would be curious to see what the current volumes look like or or I just don't care. I guess I'm not too worried about the operations. I think they're gonna be fine. Um, I, don't, I don't remember seeing anything about bike ped volumes in the counts that were done. I'm curious about what's out there now. Um, and if, I guess I, the other thing that you mentioned today that raises like alarm bells in my head, I think in general, we always need to protect parking. That's a big deal. Although we just got all sorts of handouts about how we shouldn't be protecting parking. Um, if, I'm not if, sure that was the message. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. uh, I don't know, there's a lot. Uh, if if a road that has parking that isn't used is just a wider paved area that's inviting higher speeds and so if we have parking that isn't being used then i feel like we have more space to accommodate bicycles navigating the intersection let's not have parking right up until the intersection so there's space for bicyclists to merge into traffic if that's what needs to happen um i i don't think like there's no reason we need to re retain the existing curb lines to protect parking that isn't being used. If it's used on the, I'm gonna call it south side, I think this intersection is like perfectly 45 skews, so it's hard to know. The, side? the lower, no, on our, on our drawing, the lower side of middle, if that side's used and the other side isn't used as much, then let's account for that in our design and drop the curb or, use it for a bicycle lane but i don't 
I don't know. I've said a lot of things. I'm going to just stop talking for a while, but I'd love to hear people's reactions to all my Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yep. I, I agree. I, I don't think we should overbuild, but I interpret that statement very differently. <laughs> to me, putting in all that infrastructure, bumping out, and then finding out afterwards that it's not going to work properly, that then everybody's pissed off that we've reconfigured an intersection and made it much more challenging than it was before to navigate relative to vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists. I, I don't think it's a benefit. I, I think option three does not preclude changing the infrastructure in the future, but going ahead and putting bump outs and things like that does preclude those changes, or at least you know increases the expenses significantly. I think the function, I, I, I don't disagree with you that we shouldn't be worried about um, a you know, BC level service, but I'm not seeing that in this intersection. No, I'm saying what what we saw in the results were some level of service D and occasionally level of service E but that's results there now as well. So it, I didn't see that, I didn't see it improving the the the, the function and the difference between the two scenarios was pretty modest. But my my point is that I think this is a good balance. Um, I appreciate what you're saying. However, I th I I think this corridor in particular. It's very challenging, uh, given the number of driveways, given the number of the activities up and down that. So to try to accommodate and make a perfect roadway out of this for cyclists is going to be very challenging. Um, and it's going to be at the expense of, of parking along the way. We, we had an episode the last time we, we went and tried to do major modifications along this. And I feel like we learned a, a, a lesson from a staff standpoint, at least, that incremental change is is much more acceptable than a wholesale change that isn't necessarily accepted in a broad manner. And I think this incremental change will be an acceptable change, and it'll provide improved functions for bicyclists as well as pedestrians as well as cars. So that's why I'm going to vote in support of this. Now, I do with Erica's comments. There are potentially some small changes we could make. In that, so we're going to stripe on Middle Street where it's previously not been striped. Well, here, yes, like those are not currently striped. That's just parking. No, it was done to try to show, you know, the number of parking. We don't, we don't have to stripe them. It was done to try to show the impact on park, the number. What of if we spaces. just, if we allowed parking where the yellow stripes are, but didn't physically put those stripes in, and just monitored it for a season? Because I feel like once we put the stripes in, that's going to encourage parking. Whereas if we don't put the stripes in those areas we're not saying you can't park there but we're not actively encouraging people with markings to park in those zones and then that would give us time to sure. monitor for a season I mean if we have problems with people parking too close to the intersection I would say that we would go ahead and stripe it mm -hmm. um, you know this there will be signage up saying you know no parking here to intersection but oftentimes that's ignored so and then my second comment which is more controversial is Currently, the bus stops very close to the intersection. I think it's right in here, is it? Yeah, it's right in there. And this might kind of accommodate some of what was said in public comment. I know we want to retain those four parking spots, but in my opinion, those four parking spots is the ideal spot for the bus to park because the vast majority of the people I see getting off the bus there, and I walk this several times a day, are going to the Margeson apartment. And I'd much rather see the bus stop directly in front of the apartment than have parking for four cars there. So I don't know if the committee would want to entertain that, but I think, you know, and that's one of those things that's just paint. So we could do the bus stop there, and if there was a lot of pushback, we could move the bus stop back. But I think it would be helpful for the bus users if the bus stop was closer to Martinson apartment. I often see people get off the bus with groceries. So they're, you know, especially in the wintertime, they're having to walk a fair distance to the apartments with, you know, not just themselves, but that's carrying true. stuff. Mark. Uh, Eric, what's your engineering opinion, professional opinion on what Chairman Bagley has for ideas? Yeah, I think not. not An engineering opinion. Yep, not parking, not painting the tri parking spaces. That's fine. The, they'll park there. We can control that with signage. The bus stop here makes sense. I mean, one, one advantage of having it here is it's close to the crosswalk. I don't know how many people are using this crosswalk in order to get on the bus to come into town, but. Um, you know, the bus stop is currently here, which is could be you know a problem when when you have uh, you know vehicles won't be able to get around. You're essentially blocking traffic and the bike lane if you put the keep the bus stop here. Moving it over to here does 
allow traffic to get by the bus stop, but you're losing parking. But I think I think it makes you know from an engineering standpoint, the bus stop would work there. So you're comfortable with that? Yeah. All right. Have to be a friendly amendment on this, uh, Peter. Uh, what? That would, yeah, I guess that would be. Which I can't make, so. <laughs> I'll make no, a friendly amendment. On, you go. Make a friendly amendment on. You go ahead. I had a question. I make a friendly amendment. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go first, then. Oh, just going back to what Peter said. We haven't made anybody upset this year. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're yeah. only four days in. <laughs> I didn't know that was our goal. The we days, just didn't start it. The, the hour's not over. <laughs> I want to make a friendly amendment on what Chairman Bagley said. Do um, you want to repeat that? Yeah, to, to not stripe the yellow lines on Middle Street, which I guess would accommodate all of them, and to trial or to pilot the bus stop in the four parking spots directly in front of Margitson Apartments. Does it need all four? Maybe, maybe just two? Or that I wouldn't know. Mr. Chairman, you mean white parking stripes, right? Not yellow. And any painted stripes. What's oh, marked, just what's yeah. marked as yellow. Yeah. They would, yes, they would be white, but they're marked as yellow on the plot map. Yeah, actually, these other spots that are marked in black are not existing either. I mean, paint any none of those. None of these are painted yeah. today. So I had a question. Did Leah, did she get all that, Leah? I don't know what the name of that apartment building is. Oh, Margison. 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 M A R G C H E S O N. I got it, yes. She, she got it. <laughs> I just wondered, uh, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, who has contacted you about concerns for parking? Are there people who have apartments? Because Summer Street and Middle have a lot of apartments without. <clears throat> Uh, off-street parking. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering who's been contacting a women's city club? Um, the, these were residents at the last meeting. I, you were available. I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. They, I did watch uh, it, but I wonder if you've gotten had. more comments on taking away parking. Mm -hmm. I think there I was have. two or three residents, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly, yeah. that were, you know, they had two. The biggest concern was, I think, the speed on Summer Street. Uh, but the secondary concern was taking away parking. Parking, yeah. Um, it wasn't just Summer Street, it was Middle Street. Middle uh, Street, yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of parking on Summer Street, both sides. Yeah. Um, my other question is the bus stops uh, pull out of traffic to the curb. They don't stop in the middle of traffic. Is that the plan? Oh, the plan would be, yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you make the space available for them to pull the yeah. curb. Yeah. They don't always pull to the curb. It's a driver's choice. Yeah. Or something, you know. Right, but the space is available for them, making it safer for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. Okay. Steve? Um, I, I think I brought this up at the last meeting, but I still kind of remain a little disappointed by the the island there on the west being just a painted island. You know, I know you said it adds flexibility, but I think it also encourages bad driver behavior, and we're going to see drivers driving on that. Uh, on the eastern side, where the text says Middle Street, I'm wondering, is that really necessary to have that painted island? And in light of moving the bus stop, could we just keep that a single, you know, double yellow line and give you space to put the bus stop in there? I feel like this is in town and creating these painted center islands does not look very yeah. urban in town street to me. Yeah, and that was part of my thinking as well. When to, in order to provide parking or a bus stop here, we could shrink this up, and and this uh, this painted island could go away. And yeah. what you could do is just you would keep the center line, but then you could put a dashed line from the beginning yep. here back to where it begins. And yeah. So when a driver is coming out of town, they see the dashed line, they say, "Oh, I need to keep right." Yeah. You know. So I, I mean, I think you can accommodate that into your yeah. dealing with the bus stop, but I, a little bit of room. I just don't like that look, and I, I don't like it on the other side either. But I realize I'm the minority on that. But no, I didn't realize that was painted. I thought that was. It's just paint, no, right? No. Oh, because it has the bullnose. Which oh, this side. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's paint. Uh oh. We did look at a raised island. And you can't not make the turns from Miller Summer onto Mil if you have a raised island here. The raised island would have to be back so far that it wouldn't serve any purpose. Have a, Can we I, do? It's even a textured something there. I, mm. 
you know, the, the technically something flush, yeah. Or the concrete that has the striations in it. I, I just think just to paint on asphalt is disappointing and asking for trouble, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, the maybe do paint for a season and then texture after we verify it. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather do. If we're gonna bite the bullet. Do it, do it. You know, let's once. do a, a corrugated or like a. We, we have a pat we have do we have a template or a, a standard that we have used in Portsmouth to do that that would fit here somewhere else so we don't keep doing new materials and new things do you have we have a uh, in terms of uh, pavers we have a template in terms of how to, you know, you'd do that in terms of the washboard concrete the DOT is the one that's used it more I don't think we've mm -hmm. used the, the washboard concrete I'm not a huge fan of that stuff uh, but it's just a design mm -hmm. preference. I, I don't right. care what material you choose. I just think we should choose something to put in there. Yeah. Well, we I just want to make sure it's one. maintainable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can everyone make all the turns on alternative one? What's that? There you go. Some of the Harper and I have with alternative one is too is if because you're not providing a left turn lane coming out of town, yeah. you're going to get that situation like you have in the south of Sagamore. And when finally the through traffic gets the green light and go, then they just hit the gas because they're so frustrated waiting. So I think you may actually be increasing speeds in this case with the, in that type of situation, road rage. And I think coming into town, the traffic does tend to slow. We, we've seen that monitoring the speeds because of the on-street parking here. The road is narrowing up and the traffic is slowing coming into town anyway, so that shouldn't change. Dave, did you have one, and then Mary Lou? Yeah, I just, well, a general comment was that um, I agree with some of the proposed changes, getting the bus stop relocated, a single line rather than the, the painted island on the, on the northbound side, or, yeah, northbound side. On the, um, um, the other side, I get why you wanted it painted. I wouldn't be averse to going with some sort of textured thing there. Um, but I, in, you know, in general on this thing is that that intersection, just the hardware, the traffic signal hardware there is so antiquated and so yes. obsolete, you know, whether you're pushing the button waiting for a walk sign or middle of the night you're driving through and you've got a walk phase goes through and everything's stopped and there isn't a car within 10 miles um, and you're sitting there. So just getting this hardware in seems to allow some flexibility for future tweaking if, if that needed to get done. So I'd certainly be in favor of going forward with this with some of those slight modifications and would be definitely in favor of not striping any of those parking spaces in there because I think people can park more efficiently without those in some cases than having the line striping for parking spaces on either side of, of the, um, on the, essentially the, the east side of I'm sorry, the west side of Middle Street. Yeah, back there. Yeah. That, none of those are striped right now. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Mary Lou? Yes, I just wondered how many parking spaces will be changed or lost with this latest well, discussion. Well, uh, what we did is we calculated the loss of 10 parking spaces, which was, uh, yeah, I think there's a few here. Right. And then, and then a few in this area here. So it was a total of 10 parking spaces. Ten. Even with this discussion that we've been having It'll be 14 this morning, with this still. Discussion. But I don't think it's, 14 well, well, it's not really 14. to say we're losing time right. because people don't park there now. Yeah. Even though they're technically parking spaces, hmm. I've never seen anybody park on no. a lot of those. It's, it's 10 spaces. hypotheticals. In front of the building, they're hypothetical park. parking yeah, spaces. Yeah, I just think just the mere point that the public came forward and made a comment and the city, the staff responded to that, that's a compromise. So I'm not hung up on that number anymore. I was before because of public comment saying no way to yes. this proposal, 510. But since the city's made an adjustment and listened to them, made a compromise on that, mm -hmm. I would think that those residents, and they call their neighborhood, and that neighborhood should be content. Maybe not all of them, but that's a compromise at least. That's yeah, it's just. <laughs> we'll soon find <laughs> out. <laughs> Could we put edge line there so it's clear where the travel way ends and the parking begins? Oh, like a, a white edge line yeah. along here? Yeah. Otherwise, I feel like we just have mm -hmm. a lot of... I, 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 I like the idea of getting rid of the perpendicular parking lines, but they do have the benefit of kind of 
crowding visually. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we need something there that. Yeah, an edge line could be done out there to provide, delineate the parking lane. Delineate lane's. the parking space. Mm -hmm. Still is going to look like a. Yeah. And it would help to visually narrow it. Yeah, Dave? Is this, um, is this scheduled to be repaved as part of the uh, link, the uh, Union Street separation, or is what's there now the final pavement? Or no, is that that's, that was just temporary. Okay, Let so winter. so this will be milled and a new surface over the entire thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> the whole road's scheduled for. Yeah, the whole road's scheduled, but it's depending upon um, the level of whether it's just paving. That's one thing. Um, whether there's a desire for everybody to make modifications to the roadway itself, um, the project may take a number of years to accomplish. Um, so, at this point, we you know there's some sections that are challenging relative to the road surface, so we're making sure that those are safe. Yeah. So right now, it's just it might be an overlay to. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. All right. Um, so the motion in with the friendly amendments is for the hybrid option with the not the striping of the parking it sounds like now and to try the bus stop in front of Martinson apartments and all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed <laughs> me Erica all right uh, moving on to parking principles, request to approve the proposed changes to the city parking principles by DPW and planning department. Sample motion move to approve the proposed changes to city parking principles as proposed by DPW and planning department. So moved. Second. Second. And I don't know if there's any discussion on this. We had a public meeting on these as well as we've talked about them in several previous PTS meetings. And there's not major modifications. I think there's, hey Peter, you could speak to, or Eric, so that there's one major, not major change, but one significant change, I would say. And yeah, that was to include more multimodal transportation in the parking principles than we did previously. I think it just clarifies. It, it, I, I don't see any, any radical change from the previous principles. <coughs> it reduced the number of principles from 21 to 16. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but you know, overall, it, it it really, you know, continues to emphasize the fact that you know that the city um, is a, a dominant player in parking, um, in terms of you know that is a part of city function, uh, that to provide vitality um, to the city um, and all the the types of things we do, um, the multimodal aspects, the. It, it is really just kind of the guardrails for the planning department and planning board and other land use boards to be able to use to set up policy. You know, it's not. It's, this is not setting policy. This is not changing ordinances. This is purely a guide, a guideline, or guidance, kind of a, a, a sense of you know, what we think parking is for and how we want to utilize it. Erica? Have these changed at all since the last time they came before us? No. no. Great. Yep. All right. I didn't notice a typo, though, on them. Yep. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> it should be principles. E -L -L no. Oh, my God. Not pal. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Chairman, I was going to say we've done a lot of wordsmithing on this, but now obviously that would be called into question given a typo on the title. But um, I think uh, the committee spent a lot of time, the working group, excuse me, has spent a lot of time on these and uh, I'm very pleased with them. So happy to support it. All right. All those in favor? Hey, did we have a motion? Uh, oh. Yeah, there yeah. was a motion and a I second. I think Mark, I'm sorry, Peter, and Mark? Second. Or no, I think, Peter and Mary Lou. I think Peter sec motioned and Mary Lou and I wrestled over the second. All right. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, and then C, Old Business, Chapter 7, Section 7 A.402, Bus Stops Designated, Request to Amend Section to Reflect the Current Conditions by DPW. And the sample motion is moved to approve recommended changes to Chapter 7, Section 7 A.402, Bus Stops Designated. Um, and this is really just a paperwork cleanup. We have some bus stops in our ordinance for streets that no longer exist. So this doesn't have to do with any of the recent changes with bus stops. This is 
mm-hmm. kind of looking back at stuff that we did 40 years ago and then never updated as streets and whatnot changed and bus routes changed. I was curious because it looks like the ordinance now just has a bus stop on Hanover Street. Yeah. Which I'm curious how we're defining bus stops. Are these dedicated pull-off areas or are these places with signs? Because pull-off areas. It's okay. where the curb is reserved exclusively for bus usage. There are a lot of bus stop signs all right. around. I was like, uh, yeah. something. That doesn't, I assume it means the one, but I wanted to clarify. Steve? I, I think while we're taking the, the opportunity to clean up the ordinance, I would love to see that title change as well for these to be designated as dedicated bus pullouts as opposed to using the term bus stop because as you said we have bus stops all over um, I'm going to disagree with the chairman I mean I I believe that the demonstration the change we've made in in Market Square with the uh, private vehicle spaces being put in what was formerly bus pullout I, I always viewed that as a trial or a temporary, but by striking this out, it kind of gains a step towards permanency. And I, I voted against that demonstration. I, I've watched it a lot. I, I don't like the clutter that it adds to Market Square. So I, I agree with the concept of all this house cleaning. I suggest we change this to dedicated bus pullouts, um, but I do not agree at this point with the Congress Street slash Market Square being struck because I know that once this goes through readings and council, nobody will want to touch it again for a while. And it, it just basically sets in concrete what's there in Market Square right now. So like the concept except for the strikeout of Section A Congress Street. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, um, the, the ones on Congress Street is actually, there's a couple of different ones. A is Congress Street that's being struck, and then there's F Market Square, which is being, F oh. Mar- Market Square is actually the one. Okay, the thank you. Congress Street, that's two parallel strips adjacent to the sidewalk. It, it's from many, many years. It's pre prior to oh, okay. the 70s. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Then I meant what I was just saying. My, my issue then is F, as you said. Yeah, and even that had two parallel strips. Yeah, so strange. If we do keep it, we still need to modify it to make it match what's on the Okay. I, I agree with Steve. That was, I wanted to understand what this meant to begin with, but that Market Square trial was a controversial is uh, i think our most controversial vote that we've had here since i've been on board Mm -hmm. it was sold as a trial so i think changing an ordinance to match a trial before we have signed off on the effects of the trial seems premature i'm fine with cleaning up the ordinance i like the idea of clarifying what we mean by it instead of bus stops bus pull-offs i think that's a great idea i don't think we should be striking something that's still just a trial. Well, I guess to, to that point, F isn't really indicative of what was previously at Market Street. No. So this so ordinance doesn't match. We right. can clean it up, but right. it should not. So I, I'm not comfortable cleaning it up to eliminate it altogether. Mr. Chair, I move to table this Okay. Uh, until such time we have consensus on that, whether it's a permanent fix. Because likewise, if we make a, f- a change to it now, and then we all decide, yep, this is a great fix, we yeah. have to go back and do it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I, you know, I, I'd be interested in a report back in terms of you know what we've seen from video review and what we've seen from you know monitoring and that. I, I know there's a lot of consternation um, relative to this. I personally have watched it, and I think it works fine. Um, but you know, I mean, Market Square is a congested space, no matter what. Um, no, I think a report back would be great. And I'd, I'd ask you to check with both of the bus services and get their feedback on how it's working and how their customers are being affected by it would be a nice piece, too. So we, yeah, we've been monitoring it with a camera out there. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. Erica and then Mary Lou. I would be hesitant to end that trial before we've gone through a summer season. I mean, I, I don't think we can end it until construction's over anyway. Yeah, I'm, or, I'm comfortable but, with tabling this 
I, I yeah. feel like... I mean, it's been like this Yeah, these years. have been wrong for 30 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <no. laughs> a temporary report back now on how it's been going, I think, is fine, but the winter is not yeah. quite at the same level of mm -hmm. both vehicles and pedestrians, so I think we need to see... We need to stress test it through a summer season. Uh, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing to note is that, you know, we've eliminated parking or restricted parking on High Street at the moment. Um, so we, you know, we have kind of forced the situation right. to mimic what you would see, and it was Christmas season. Um, so in some ways, I would think you had more traffic and more pedestrians. Um, you know, I, 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 it's, I understand what you're saying, and I'm fine. I'm comfortable with with voting for let this continue <laughs> on as a pilot. We presented it as a pilot. It was not, there was not an intent uh, to make you know a quick change uh, type of thing. Um, so I'm perfectly comfortable with it. So, yeah, so I made a motion to table this. Yes, I was just going to say I agree with both Steve Second. and Erica's comments regarding this plan. So okay. I'm glad that we're tabling it. So should we table it to, like, say, September? I think we table it indefinitely. Table it indefinitely? All right. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Until we're ready. Until we I don't want to bring it time forward. specific, you know. All right. So all those in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, informational uh, police monthly accident report from the deputy chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, November, we had 65 total motor vehicle crashes. Out of those, uh, 34 were, uh, were reportable crashes. So um, pretty decent numbers considering the heavy travel time that occurs during uh, November to keep those numbers down. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into that, but um, and we were pretty pleased overall considering the amount of holiday traffic and increased activity around that time. Great. Thank you, Chief. And uh, any miscellaneous items? Mary Lou? Yes. Um, there have been comments. I've talked with Eric about this. The intersection crosswalk lights at uh, State Street and Middle Street. Mm -hmm. And there was a comment yesterday from Bill Najar, Najar, N -A -J -A -R, who said that this has been going on for years, that these lights have not been functioning. It's a busy intersection. Why can't they get fixed? All four of them are malfunctioning. Yeah. They we have been working on it diligently. We are having, bringing another vendor in to take a look at it. It's we can. It's a very difficult problem to troubleshoot, and we need to really take things apart. And everything out there is, you know, rusted and corroded. It's old equipment. It's going to break when we take it apart, and it's, that will require replacement. We're trying to do it without having to replace the, a lot of equipment just to fix it, but we're not having any luck troubleshooting it, finding out why the, the pedestrian signals aren't working correctly, but. I think they're in walk mode when they're flashing. Don't walk. It's yep. it's very confusing. They're so it's just malfunctioning all the time. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate your frustration, and, and, um, well, it's been going on for years. It's not. Well, it, and, and it's not like this is the only intersection we've been having challenges with. I know. I'm it, just it, saying it, it's a no, busy. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not my, finished. I'm, I haven't finished. All right. I'm just reinforcing your frustration. I'm it's, saying yes. It's not just me. I see comments all the time. I'm telling you, I'm frustrated fix. too. That's what I'm saying. So replace them. <laughs> and they, they replace do them keep if it's working, a safety and then they issue break, that and bad that's work. been going on for years. Replace them. So, I, can I speak to this now? <laughs> Go ahead. The frustration is even replacing them. The equipment's not working. The new equipment's not performing as well. The the this level of service is not there. It's it's an industry issue. We're, we are frustrated that we're not getting the level of service that we want. We're frustrated that the equipment's not performing as one would think. So it's, it's you know, it, it's, you know, Eric, you, you know, he, yeah. I'm always saying, Eric, why can't we do this? He's like, well, they're coming up again. They're doing the, you know, it's like, well, didn't we replace it? Yep, we did. And it's. We have a brand I, new signal at Cabot in Islington. It's not working now because the pedestrian buttons have gone bad already. Yeah. I brand that. new. Brand new. Only I know. Two weeks so old. what are we doing at Summer and Middle? I mean, Miller. Different are we vendor. having the same vendor? because we, it's not working. We are looking into different vendors. Yeah. Well, I'm just reiterating this issue of that very, all the intersections in Portsmouth are busy. Yeah. But this is well used. I've seen students coming on skateboards, waiting, and then diagonally crossing that intersection to go to school, to go to middle school. It's just a busy, I'm I think, yeah, voicing the concerns of a lot of people. The concern is noted, but our ordinance ability to fix it is limited because of the response we're getting from the vendors and we're working to fix that but there's only so much we can do so we understand the problem and we're doing as much as okay. we can to fix it but it's unfortunate that it's not easy to fix 
And then I'd like to ask Mark to read a proclamation uh, that okay. the mayor presented at the last council meeting um, on his suggestion uh, regarding Jessica's Law, which is perfect timing as we're looking at our first winter storm of the season this Sunday, probably. Maybe. Might be raining. Let's see, the Council Chamber City Hall of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, a proclamation whereas the tra tragic death of Jessica Smith in 1999 from ice blowing off a tractor trailer and then a box truck in front of her prompted uh, the passage of legislation in the New Hampshire in 20, uh, no, 2002, known as Jessica's Law, that requires vehicles operators to clear ice and snow off the tops of their vehicles before driving and Whereas drivers who violate the law face fines up to $250 to $500 a first offense, between $500 and 1000 on the second offense. Whereas the law is based on legal concept of negligence, which generally consists of actions, but can all also consist of omissions where there is some duty to act. And whereas we see snow-covered cars almost daily, despite the law and the police department reminds us that the impedes visibility for the safe operations of vehicles, putting other drivers and pedestrians at additional risk. Whereas local advocates remind us that the responsibility to comply and spread awareness of the law lies with the Portsmouth residents and surrounding communities, and that taking the time to clear your car can cause ir irreparable damage to others' lives. Now, therefore, Deagle McEachern, Mayor of Portsmouth, on behalf of the members of the City Council and citizens of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, do hereby join in the proclamation for 30 days, Jessica's Law Awareness in Portsmouth. And all call upon our fellow citizens to take the extra minute to remove an ice and snow from their vehicles. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So that was a, a you know, it's a citywide awareness program. The timing's right because we haven't had any snow. And we do have some storms coming up, of course, and the weather's going to get colder. Uh, Chief, do you have any reports from last year? Any incidents? Any stops? Oh, you know, oh we certainly stopped. A lot of stops. So any tickets, any violations, or are you just strictly I educating I the public? I don't have that. But I have seen stops where that the person has had to get out of their car and clean it off with the Yeah, right there, you know, generally we take the, you know, the um, awareness, education, enforcement approach, so... You know, first time could get a warning, depending on how egregious it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we're certainly out there enforcing it, and we will be this this winter. Yeah, it's a state too, local communities, Ride, Newcastle. Right. So, but not everybody knows about it. That's the thing. Right. You know, so I don't know if they bring you know take that up in driver's education at the, the kids yes. level. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. I'll tell you from my granddaughter's perspective. All right. Any more? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if this brings to mind, I'm sorry, Mary, you go out first. You <laughs> Thank you, Peter. I just wanted to bring up two items. I, I'm concerned about the electric scooters on the we sidewalks. We were going to bring them up in December. We didn't because you weren't at that meeting. Okay, right. And then I'm we forgot about it for to. this meeting. And the electric bicycles, the speed of electric bikes on the roads is really a concern. I'm more worried about the 4,000-pound cars. <laughs> well. The, the, right, but you've got the cars and the electric bicycles. That's what I'm talking about. Conflict there. So anyway, at some Steve. point, can we just talk about safety measures that we might be taking, ordinances that we might be working on um, before everything starts up again in the nicer weather? Yes. At some point. Thank you. Steve? I saw in my inbox, but I haven't yet read it, There, there is at least one piece of legislation introduced in the House, I believe, in New Hampshire House, regarding regulation of e-devices. So um, maybe we can incorporate that uh, update into our review. Okay. Great. Thank Erica. you. Um, the skate park seems to be gangbusters. Oh, yeah. I counted 20 some odd kids there the other day which is great i think it might be a good idea for us to maybe do a count over at that intersection just to i'm less concerned with the volume i'm more concerned with just observations making sure that there's a safe way for all those kids to get to and from the skate park i mean there is but i just i'm curious how they're accessing it and majority of them are getting driven there okay yeah just like school <laughs> no, I, I think honestly, we should just, just have like it on school. our radar to yeah. kind of pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree, and, and we are uh, very much aware of the, the dynamic of that area. Yeah. Um, it, it, the project 
has some punch list items that still need to be, it's, it's, you know, technically it's not completed. It's substantially complete because people are using it. Um, but we're, you know, we're aware of that and we will um, monitor that. You know, we're working on, you know, the parking in there is tough. They need to start utilizing alternative parking areas um, and, and making sure the, the pedestrian ways are safe makes sense as well. So I, I just wanted to piggyback off of the awareness for the snow Good. and encourage people to be patient. Um, you know, winter driving is different than regular driving. Um, and it's a matter of, you know, COVID is still with us. So staffing numbers are down. Um, you know, it, it may not be, the roads may not be, you know, pristine, clean uh, immediately. So be patient, be, you know, drive carefully, uh, anticipate braking, anticipate turning. And do we, snow notifications? <laughs> the snow notification um, will be, uh, has been modified. Do you want to speak to that, Eric? Oh, I but Ben. <laughs> ben, ben can speak to that. <laughs> it's it's rather minor. Uh, the system uh, switched over from red uh, the code red to smart nine one one, which is automated to several different outlets with one uh, application of the messaging. So it makes it far handier and far more accurate and easier to update than the old set of systems. The, um, the channel uh, 20, uh, uh, 22 um, productions will have a banner that, that just basically says, go here for this information as opposed to updated reports that are difficult uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to perform. And, and, and what is, an, it works, but it's an antiquated system. Uh, I, I put together a, a tutorial on how to do all of what's necessary under the old system, and it was 29 pages long. <laughs> and we're, we're expected to get this information out instantaneously. Back in the old days, though. Remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just been, it's been and type yeah. the stones. <laughs> it's, it's been building over the years. The more things we seem to add, the more thing, the more folks find reasons to say that I didn't get that one or I didn't get this one. I mean, I had a guy last year blame it on us because he dropped his phone in the toilet and didn't receive the messaging, and so he, he was towed. And I said, how long have you lived here? And he said, 23 years. And I'm like, look out the, look out the window for that matter. And so it's, I'm, I'm hopeful that the system will be widely utilized, and we do have some good sign-ups uh, for it. We put a test message out a little bit uh, ago, and, uh, and we, so I'm hopeful that people will tell their friends and family who might not be signed up for the system. It's easy to sign up. It's easier than it used to be to get off the system if you move away or no longer want the information. So it really is an upgrade all the way around. Excellent. So the, just to reiterate, the snow phone, which you can call, mm -hmm. um, is still active. It's still the still easiest. Me. It's still the, the uh, analog approach to, to this, uh, and and sign up for the um, for the uh, smart nine one one. Yeah, I did forget to mention the snow phone because that's. And just to remind folks too that uh, if it, if snow is occurring on a regular weekday, um, trash, pick up. Traf pick, trash pickup may be uh, delayed. Um, it'll actually be canceled for that week, um, and you'll you'll just have to hold on to it. You can always bring it to the transfer station um, mm -hmm. if you'd like. Or if you have special needs, um, you can contact the city uh, relative to, you know, disabilities or handicaps or so, uh, things like that. Click and fix. Click and fix. Oh, Just have a question for Ben. Can we get a report on the holiday parking, which was a major plan, a change of plans this year? Yeah, so I was I was doing a lot of work on that yesterday, and I haven't yeah. put together well, the meant, entire I think report. I a formal report back. But uh, That's it's, what I'm there's for. some yeah. pretty, some pretty cool information back. in there. Great. With that, uh, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, everyone.